All right, now we're inside the aircraft. Every Bell 47 is almost laid out different. Um, so definitely, again, have your checklist ready. Go look through your checklist. Some stuff is really not on this checklist, again, uh, which I've got an updated version actually that I did at home. Um, so we're at the pre-takeoff check, which basically means we're gonna loosen all the frictions. Cyclic friction is a rotating friction right here. Collectic friction is usually a yellow knob, and I'm already, I'm already so focused that when I take my right hand off that I actually block my collective with my knee right here. So I've got that blocked. And I take that friction off right here. So we wanna make sure that we have a good control movement. So we just rotate it all around. While we do that, check the blade out. You know, make sure that, the, that it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Send that back on and put the friction back on. Rotating friction again on that. Collective, and I show it actually on this side so you can see it better. Make sure that the throttle is all the way free of movement. You have a throttle friction actually as well on the other side. Then you raise the collective all the way up. You make sure that the collective actually does it something in the back there as well, what it's supposed to be doing. And you can tighten the collective friction again. Make sure that when you do that step, that your throttle is all the way off once again. All right, and now we've got the pedals. So we move the pedals, make sure that they're free and clear as well. And they are. We should have already, when you're checking the tail, all you hear is like, you usually hear this little click that hits the stops of the pedal. So that's a good indication. So here's the noise again, a little bit inside the cockpit. All right, so we checked all that. Next thing we do, is we're getting ready to fire it up. So, again, a uh, couple of things again. So, pre-takeoff check again, we make sure that our fuel is in. We checked it once, we checked it twice, we checked it three times, our fuel is in. Fuel shutoff off is over here. All right. There we go. All right, pedals is adjusted. So now it comes for your comfort. You have little things right here where you can pull in it up and adjust your pedals. I like to have it right here. I'll make sure that that one is on that same level. They're both on the same level. And make sure that those little switches are down so that they don't move again. So you adjust your pedals and you make sure that they're to your liking to where you're sitting and that's pretty good. Um, seat belt. Again, this one is actually a really old school seat belt where you latch it in like that. It's a little ball bearing and a little handle right here. And to take it off, all you gotta do is do that. So, seat belt on. Um, Pedals adjusted, everything is good. And now we go through the actual checks on the instrument console. So at that, this point, you have a checklist, refer to your checklist. If you ever fly one without a checklist, there's a really cool trick that I learned um, by flying a lot of different Bell 47s. Uh, it's actually moving up and down. I'm going to adjust my seatbelt here real quick. Tighten that just a little bit. There you go. Alright, so it's the up, down, up, down. Alright, so I start off at the top. My, ra my transponder is off. My radios are off carburetor heat is cold, mixture is full and rich, so you have your carburetor and you have your mixture, never never pull that one, only pull the carburetor heat, so always double check. Uh, battery alternators off, magnetos are off, all the gauges are zeroed, it's on engine temperature, fuel is on whichever tank you like to have it on, I like it just right, and then we come down to our um, our switches down here. Again, we check our fuses are in, hydraulics are on, starter um, is off, radio master is off, beacon I like to leave on, nav lights is off, our instruments are on. Come down here, our um, inside cockpit lights are off, reset my timer on the bottom here. All right, collectic friction is on and we're on the throttle. Now, it's time to check your landing lights since you're on the throttle. It's on the other side here, but landing lights are off and throttle is closed. 
Now we go to the priming stage of it. So you saw how we moved down, made sure everything is off, everything on our console is set, everything in our collective is set on our switches. Now we prime. To prime the helicopter, roll up throttle, roll it down, roll it up, roll it down. You can actually see it as well right over here. So roll it up, roll it down. If it's cold, give it a good five good cranks. If it's um, warm, about three. Then we have a little mark up here because a lot of people don't feel that, but you have a little slop in the throttle and then you hit the correlator. Right there it is. And we marked it just to make it easier for students. Um, but we want to make sure that that little mark is up. That gives us that good start. So now that we're done with that again, we're moving back up. So you see it has a flow. And if you do that with every Bell 47, you get that flow down. And once you have that flow, you won't miss anything. All right, so we're coming back up. Now it's getting ready to fire up the helicopter. So we turn on our starter. Then we move up the line. Make sure everything is still off, right? Then we move up. Mixture again, we can double check if it's rich. Now we put our mags to both. And our battery comes on. All right, at this moment, we're actually gonna take a break. And something that you did not see me do is turn on the radio master because usually we turn the radio master on and that comes when we do the flow back down once we got it fired up um, when we have the aircraft fired up to preserve battery now um, when we come back I'm gonna have the radio master on because we're gonna switch to in in cockpit audio for us to actually get some in cockpit audio and for to better show you the startup on it so when we come back that radio master will be on and I'll note that when we come back all right all right so we are back um, so our battery is on again our radio master is on so we have the inside cockpit everything is set at that point we'll go down and check once again everything is set and then we hit the starter so it's going to be really quickly when we hit the starter we're going to shout clear we're going to um, get those up to about 1500 and then uh, we wait for our rotors to come up to about 10 then we uh, join the needles and we slowly raise it to our warm-up temperature, which is about 20 to 21. All right, you ready? Here it goes. So engine is on 15, waiting for our rotors to come up to 10. All right, and we're splitting our needles. There we go, Bring him, joining them together and then slowly rolling them up. We want to stay out of the yellow area that you see right now and that is because we have synthetic resonance from the stabilizer bar. Alright, between 21 and 22 is our warm-up area. Now, once we're on the warm-up, again we're up on the top, so our alternator comes on we move down our console. Now normally the radio master switch would come on at that point. Alright, now we're on the warm-up. So we'll see you when it's warmed up. Alright, so we're back. We're still warming up here, but right now I'm actually going to do the hydraulic check. Hydraulic check is pretty simple. We loosen our friction on our side click, block our collective with our knee and then we do it in an X pattern. X pattern checks both of the servos at the same time because you have the fore aft and the left and right. And while we do that, if you look at the main rotor tip path plane, and we do that before we take off, you can see that they're rigged the right way, which is really important to check. Uh, there was actually a pilot that didn't check his rigging before takeoff, and the mechanic did something, did a mistake, and he flipped them up wrong side up. All right, so we check the servos on, we take the hydraulic switch, hydraulic switch comes off. Now we check and verify that the hydraulics are off, and they are, and we still have function and movement. But they're not locked up. So now we turn it on, and it's checking the hydraulic bypass in order for us to be able to still move it. So we verify that it's back on at that point. Once it's back on, we go ahead and tighten back our friction. All right. Four echo one one three transit north northwest to the southwest five miles. All right, so we look at our temperature, engine temperature, transmission temperature. We still need to come up a little bit on those. Uh, cylinder head temperature is still missing just a little bit of it. 
but it's going to come up pretty quickly. We can pull just a little bit of carburetor heat to get it out of that yellow range, which is fine. Um, so we're still doing the warm-up. I'm going to go ahead and do the upper checks right now for you guys, and then we'll come back and let it warm up the rest of the way. So upper checks, every time when you roll up to full RPM, you want to have full control of the aircraft. So you never roll up to full operating RPM until you have full control of the aircraft, which means you remove all your frictions. So collecting friction comes off. Again, I'm blocking my collective with my knee. Cyclic friction comes off. Verify you have all the movements. I have all the movements. I'm going to start rolling up throttle really gently. Operating RPM. We're going to go ahead and do a magneto check. Two to the left. One, two. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Back to both. Bring the RPMs back up. We just check the RPM drop. And one to the left. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. And back to both. There is one other mag check that you can do. Uh, you don't really have to do it very often, but it's to check the timing between the mags. So I turn to the left mag, I let it drop. Once it drops, I switch to the right mag and observe the drop or the raise of it, and there's no drop or raise, which means they're timed pretty good. That is one of the checks that a lot of people don't know about. All right, so now we do our spread clutch check, make sure our spread clutch is working. So we under grip around the throttle, we under grip around the throttle, and then we roll off throttle in three, two, one. All right, our needles split pretty nicely. So now we wait till our needles are joined. Check our idle at this point. All right, slowly join them back up. And bring it back up to our warm up temperature. Let's check our temperatures one more time. Temperature's good. Transmission temperature's good. Cylinder head temperature picked up again. Now we're going to turn off our carburetor heat because we're ready to go. So right side is clear, left side is clear. Checking my uh, movement on the cyclic again. And we're clear for takeoff. Roll it back up to operating RPM. Slowly raise on the collective. Eyes outside. Light on the skid. Stop all movements before further picking up. And we smoothly pick up on the collective. Right side is clear, left side is clear. We're going to go ahead and do a pedal turn right here. And follow the taxi lights out and do a takeoff from Alpha Taxiway. Offside traffic, helicopter 2802, Bravo, we'll be taking off Alpha Taxiway, left hand close pattern. Alright, made our radio call. Right side is clear, left side is clear, no oncoming traffic on Alpha Taxiway. Now we're hovering currently in the tailwind. So we got to be aware of our pedals. Alright, we're crabbing a little bit into the wind here. And we're taking off on Alpha Taxiway. All we got to do is just slowly sink forward on our cyclic. Transition into ETL. And continue to climb out. 